I suggest you pause the video and read the problem thoroughly before we begin. When given this type of problem, the process is to first determine the empirical formula, then use the given molecular weight to determine the molecular formula. So let's focus in on the first part, the percentages and determining the empirical formula. What I suggest you do to begin this problem is lay out the information that they give you and other information that you know. Using a spreadsheet or setting up a table on a piece of paper is probably an easy way to do this. Elements are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The percentage of each are given in the problem. And I also included a column for the atomic weight of each of the atoms. The next thing we're going to do is determine the number of grams in a sample. You say, well, they didn't give me a sample. I don't see any grams given in the problem here. Well, I want you to think about this. Whether you have 1 gram, 10 grams, 52 grams, 1,000 grams, a million grams of this compound, the percentages of the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are going to be the same regardless of the mass of the compound. So if you agree with me on that, you could pick any gram sample you want and the easiest one to use is a hundred because if you pick a hundred gram sample then the percent of the atom is the same as the grams of the atom in the hundred gram sample. This will work if you do it with one gram any gram you want. All you have to do is multiply the percent by the total gram sample you pick and you'll get the gram of each atom in the compound. So the next thing we're going to do is convert the grams to moles. And if you remember how to do that, you divide the mass of the atom by the atomic weight. And you do that for all three of them. We'll round it to two sig figs to the right of the decimal. The next thing we're going to do is determine the simplest ratio of atoms given this information. The way to do this is to divide the largest or the larger mole amount by the smaller or the smallest mole amount. And you do this for each one. Well, in this case, 3.26 is the smallest, so we divide it by itself. So 3.26 divided by 3.26. Okay. Well, that's one, all right? Next, let me just boost this up a little bit. We're going to divide then 8.77 and 3.26 by the smallest mole amount we have. So I'm just going to enter a formula in the cells. So we'll just do it like this. This cell divided by 3.26, which locked that in. Or you could just type in 3.26 in the denominator. And we get this. One, eight, 2.69 and 1. Now we have a bit of a problem here because according to our ratios, the formula would look like this. CH2.690. That's not going to work because we can't have a fraction of an atom. So what we need to do is work this up. In other words, let's multiply the formula by whole numbers that will hopefully produce a whole number subscript. So what I want to do is generate another column here and try different numbers, try different multipliers. I added another column called new ratio. And this is the old ratio 
multiplied by a multiplier. And the multiplier is down here in yellow. So if we take a look at the formulas in each of these cells, you can see it's the old ratio times this multiplier. And that's the case for every one of these cells here. All right, well, 1 gives us the same thing. Well, let's try 2. Well, it's still not a whole number. I got that 5.38. That's not good. Let's try 3. Well, 3 works pretty well. Say, so, wait a minute, that's 8.07. That's not just 8. You're fine, because we'll call this the error. The 0.07 is the error. Well, where's the error coming from? Well, the error is likely coming from the way I approximated, rounded off the atomic weights. If I were to use more accurate atomic weights, this likely would have been closer. But let's go with this. So the multiplier is 3. So we're going to propose that the empirical formula C3H8O3 with a weight, an empirical formula weight of 92 grams per mole. Now we'll take a look at the remainder of the problem. The molecular weight of this compound is 92 grams per mole, or more accurately, 92.11. The molecular formula, therefore, is the empirical formula, because they're identical. Molecular weight of the compound was not 92. I'm going to make something up, for example. Let's say the molecular weight was 184. Well, if the molecular weight was 184, so I'm going to type in 184 here. That's the actual molecular weight. Well, the empirical weight is 92. What you do at this point is you divide the actual molecular weight by the empirical formula weight to get a multiplier. Now, what do you do with this multiplier? Well, this multiplier now is used to multiply the subscripts in the empirical formula. If the actual molecular weight were 184, the formula of the compound, the molecular formula of the compound would be twice this, twice C3H8O3, what would be C6H16O6. And if you were to add up the atomic weights of this formula now, it would be 184.